And welcome to Real Menopause Talk. My guest today is Rian Stevenson. Rian is a woman's health champion and embodies the belief that we all have the right and the ability to live in optimal health. Formerly CEO of Cycle, her new platform, Arta, offers a year's worth of menus, recipes and meal plans. She also has beautifully thought out supplements that support simply and effectively metabolism, mood and energy to name but a few. She provides heavenly retreats and so much information. We met up to discuss how we no longer have to settle for feeling anything less than our best. Rianne, lovely to meet you. Thank you for joining me today. Would you like to start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself, your family, background, where you come from, and so on? Yeah, of course. Well, firstly, thank you so much for ha having me. My name is Reed Stevenson, so I'm the founder of Art and Nutrition. I am also a nutritionist and naturopath uh, and herbalist. I'm originally from Canada, but I've been in the UK for, I think, almost 15 years now. It's wild. So I became very passionate about health at a young age, um, which kind of took me into my, my calling as being a naturopath. My mother was very into health as well. So it's kind of in my family. And I currently live in London. I have a baby who is two years old, Maisie. She's very, very cute. My hands are full. And I'm about to give birth in actually just 10 days from now to a second girl. So... That's me. My hands are definitely full. <laughs> very full and very exciting, it sounds like. Mm. What brought you to the UK? To be honest, it was a boy, um, of course. So my boyfriend at the time when I was young, in my 20s, was moving over here. And then a bunch of my friends from high school were, were actually also coming over here. And my father is from Wales, so I have dual citizenship. So I thought, why not? I'll just go over for one year, see how it goes. The boy and I split up after about three months and I stayed for 15 years. So <laughs> Amazing. yeah, as usual for, for the first kind of 10 years, I was like, oh, just one more year, just one more year. And then after 10 years, I was like, no, I think I live here. I think this is my home now. <laughs> How did Arta come to be then? You went from fitness. Obviously, you just said that you were brought up naturopathic family, interested in nutrition, but to go from fitness to a whole holistic approach, how did that happen? So actually, when I first moved here, I was in clinical practice and I was in clinical practice for about eight years. I specialized in women's health, in gut health and kind of energy. And I was lucky enough to meet the founders of a fitness brand called Cycle, who kind of wanted someone to get involved to help to make it more of like a wellness destination. So I got involved with Cycle and within a few months, they asked me to be CEO, which was awesome. I know it sounds strange kind of to go from nutrition to fitness, but I also used to be a competitive swimmer. Um, my mom was an athlete as well. So sport and health have, have been kind of two very core parts of, of, of who I am. So I happily went into fitness. I loved it. I built that brand for seven years. And what I noticed that was really interesting was by the time the pandemic hit, we were wildly successful. We were seeing about 10,000 people per week. And although so many, so many of these people were really engaged in fitness, really starting to love movement, they were getting fitter, but they weren't necessarily getting healthier. And all of those themes that I used to see in clinical practice were still there, if not more. So, so many of these people would say they still had IBS and they had problems with their skin or problems with their hormones. They had anxiety, they had insomnia and it just kind of goes to show that you can't really take a siloed approach. So working on one thing, it's a great first step, but actually that there's still such a need to kind of get that functional medicine point of view out there and really help people to, to, to kind of solve these lifestyle issues that we don't need to have. We don't need to struggle with our hormones every month. We don't need to have IBS. We don't need to feel so anxious that we can't sleep. So there are so many things that we can do in terms of our nutrition and our supplementation that can help all of these things that actually conventional medicine doesn't have an answer for. And so I just thought it was a great time to move into that. And I was also really excited to kind of get back to my roots. Nutrition for me is the foundation of health, fitness, 
performance yeah sleep. it like, has to be it's very easy for me to feel that everybody knows that because that's the kind of realm that i operate in exactly yeah but it's not common knowledge is it no it's not and i do feel that we need to get in early and uh, train yeah. our kids <laughs> and teach them totally as you're one of the younger women who are supporting menopause, you've been in numerous yeah. publications alongside yeah, yeah. the women who are more in perimenopause and menopause. What drives you to be such an avid supporter of those of us in that particular phase of life? Yeah, well, I think I'm, I'm a huge advocate of women's health full stop. And that means every phase. So whether it's menstruation, fertility, pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause or menopause. And I think it's just because, because of the nature of my, my practice, I mainly saw females and there is just such a gap. They're so underserved. So many women are struggling with, with issues that are usually brushed off as just anxiety or you're just a woman. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a diagnosis. Like being a woman is not a diagnosis, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that I became really passionate about women's health when I was in clinic, but also just as I, as I get older, I've been through more issues myself, which have led me to becoming even more passionate about helping women kind of get to the bottom of their health. And then also I watched my mom go through menopause where, look, this was 20 years ago and there was no information. There was no acceptance. My dad used to just say, oh, she's crazy. And she really suffered. And, and actually I, I have a lot of compassion for women because we're not taught anything. Like when, when you actually reflect on our knowledge of our bodies, most of it is self-researched, right? So in high school, we learn about our menstrual cycle, kind of, but it's really around kind of don't get pregnant. Here's how to use a condom. And we're all terrified that we can get pregnant from a swimming pool. And then <laughs> you go through like 20 years of life being terrified of getting pregnant. And then you want to get pregnant, but actually you've been on the pill for 10 years and you have no idea that that's actually harmed your cycle or you, you don't really know what a normal cycle feels like. And then as you get to late thirties, things start to, to change again. And I find that when women in their 30s go to the doctor with with things that could be hormonal they're brushed off again and they're offered either anti-anxiety pills or they're 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 just kind of told it's normal and then there's this other phase of menopause which we fear we fear like this is the beginning of the end we're kind of taught that you know your sex drive goes down so you're no longer sexual your skin changes so you're no longer attractive and it's a real kind of unknown realm. And I just don't think that's fair. So I really think that there are so many things that women can do to optimize their health through every stage, whether it's menstruation or menopause. And they need to know that because, because if not, they're either left on their own or they're probably going to be put on a medication that actually doesn't serve them. And, mm -hmm. uh, neither of those options are good. I couldn't agree more. What is the overriding symptom or symptoms that women come to you with when they're looking for support, when they come to Arta for nutrition and health? There are kind of three that are tied. One is just energy, right? So I feel like women in their 30s are usually kind of working quite hard. They've got a family. They're kind of doing all those unpaid tasks at home <laughs> that we all take on. And it takes a toll, right? Yeah. It's kind of the first time we start to really feel like, wow, like this is just not okay. Like I can't have alcohol like I used to. My diet doesn't bounce back like it used to. My, my body, it changes a lot faster. So I think they're really looking for advice on like, what are the core things they should do and eat and take to keep their energy up because, because it's hard. Mm -hmm. That's one. Number two is gut health and gut health is just so huge, no matter what age group I see. And then the third is hormonal. So it's either they think they're starting to go through perimenopause or they're trying to get pregnant or they're going through menopause and they're, they don't understand what's happening. And their doctors have usually kind of said, well, you're fine. And so they're really looking for, for information and for solutions for how to eat and what they should take that will help to just make them feel good on the day to day. Those are kind of the three most common things that I see. 
One of the others that I encounter quite a lot is the menopausal weight gain, because like you just said, we can drink like we used to, we can't eat in the same way that we used to. And then there is the danger of going from one extreme of restriction and punishment to just letting it go and relaxing and trying to enjoy it. And food and exercise It's so easy to say, and it's very hard for a lot of people to do. They shouldn't be punishments. And eating healthily and good food that makes you feel good and that you can enjoy can be a real pleasure. It doesn't have to be miserable (laughs) to be healthy at all. How can you help people get into that mindset? It really depends on where they're coming from. So if you've got a complete beginner who has been thinking that nutrition and fitness are punishments, then it's going to take a bit longer, but you have to encourage them to try to find a form of fitness that they love because no matter who you are, I can guarantee you, you can find some way of keeping fit that you enjoy. So it doesn't have to be a one hour spin class. It doesn't have to be hit. It can be your dance cardio, a Pilates. It can be whatever you enjoy it. And I think that's the most important thing. I think when it comes to diet, look, that's one of the reasons why we started our platform is because I found that when I started practice here, so many people thought that healthy food meant like a steamed piece of meat and some greens. And that's so dull. I mean, I think that's so dull. There's only so many times you can eat that. And food is functional, but it's also a source of pleasure. And we can't forget that. And so in order to get on a sustainable program, we have to make sure that that pleasure is still there. So the first part is about just kind of educating them on kind of what foods do what for your body. So the importance of blood sugar balance, the importance of inflammation, the importance of gut. And I think the the thing I really love about working with women is that they're, they seem to be really thirsty for the knowledge, right? Like they, Mm -hmm. they want to understand it. Whereas when I work with men, they're, they're kind of like, just tell me what, what I should eat and when, and I'll do it. But women, they really want to understand why and how. So that's that's good because when you get explained these principles, they make sense. And once you understand why something works and why something doesn't work, it's much easier to follow. It's way easier than me just saying, look, don't have this, don't have that. Then it's really about introducing them to the recipes and types of foods that can show them that actually, yes, it's the truth. You can eat really well and still manage weight. And look, it is harder for women in menopause. So they do have to be more careful, but I still think they want to know that and know why than just Mm -hmm. to not. And then once you have that knowledge, it's your choice, right? When you don't have the knowledge and you feel at the mercy of your hormones, you can kind of be like, oh, I'll just eat what I want. There's no point. I have no idea. But when you, when you understand the driving factors, when you understand the levers you can pull, it then becomes your your decision. And I think that's really empowering. I think having the control, the choice, the knowledge is where it's at. And and it's basically how you're going to make your choices. And then all the choices are good. Yeah. And I also think it really helps you to not get so caught up in your symptoms, right? So say, we all know, unfortunately, that alcohol exacerbates hot flashes, right? So Mm -hmm. we know this now, but we can still choose to go out and have wine. But then at least we know like, okay, well, look, I had wine, I'll be hot for a few days, but it was worth it. Yeah. Whereas when you don't know what's contributing to your hot flashes, and you're just having wine every night, because you're stressed, or you're stressed about your hot flashes, then you feel quite helpless, and you don't understand what you can do. And there's some nights where you might think, well, actually, I'm sick of this, I don't want a hot flash, I'm not going to have alcohol for three weeks. And that feels like a positive choice you've made for yourself, not punishment you've imposed on yourself because someone told you to, right? One of the things I absolutely love about your platform is the fact that you have a year's worth of (laughs) recipes and meal plans. And yes, I am sure the vast majority of us are very time poor with either work or family, kids or parents or both. Life is busy. Yeah. And also avocado breakfast mousse. Oh my goodness. That so is, good. Ah. Oh, oh my, I, I mean, number one fan. Right? Yes. Yeah, honestly, please. When we put that one up, everyone's like, is this a typo? So I'm like, no, no, <laughs> this is a thing. I eat it all the time. I love it. It's so good. Um, so 
the membership. So this, this really has come out of my years of experience as a nutritionist, but then also my real life experience as a mother who runs a business who has no time. So one thing I found is that when I give people a nutrition plan, they can follow it for a couple of weeks and they, they do well. And they're like, okay, but now what do I cook now? Like, what do I do every day? And as a nutritionist, I mean, we, we can't kind of arm you with a never ending supply of recipes, but at the same time, I totally get it because you've been told to follow these principles. If you're raised in a kind of meat and veg household where you rely on kind of your white carbs and your dairy, it's a completely different way of cooking. So that made me think. We also then did a program last year called the 28 day reset, which was wildly successful we had about a thousand people go through it. So many people just said it, it cured their gut. Their skin was amazing. They lost weight. Their energy was fab, but we surveyed them and only about half of them kept it up. So I wanted to understand why the other ones could not. And they all said, look, we, we love it. It makes sense, but I just don't know what to cook every day. So I was like, okay, okay. Then fast forward to building this business and I'm a mother and all of a sudden I have to cook food for my baby. I have to cook food for my husband. I have to cook food for myself. And I'm just so sick of thinking about what I should cook every day. <laughs> it takes up what well, you know. I mean, as a mother, it takes up so much mental headspace. Uh -huh. And even when you don't have kids still, it's the same thing. So like, I know what I should eat. I know exactly what I should eat. And I still just get so tired and I'm I'm rammed. My days are hectic. I don't want to have to think of something interesting. So either you'd fall into that trap of making the same thing every single day, which is like your salmon and broccoli and sweet potatoes. So boring after a while, or you order in, right? And, and ordering in is expensive. It's, it's not as healthy and it's not something that I, I really want. So I just started to think, wouldn't it be so great if someone just told me what, what I should eat every day? And I knew that it was going to taste great. And I knew that it was going to be totally healthy. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of born from those three areas where I know there's a need from my clinical practice. I've seen how people can interact with a program that's short and have great success, but then still need the tools for long-term health. And then even just the convenience and the headspace of having something, that's really why I wanted to create it. So that, that, that's where it came from. It is an absolute joy and a stroke of genius because like you said, the headspace that it takes up and your recipes aren't complicated and time consuming. Yeah. They are beautifully crafted, but oh, very, very accessible and delicious. We've tried to keep them kind of 30 minutes or less. There's of course the odd one that takes more. And we've also made sure that there's an omnivore option and there's a plant-based option so that if you want to be more, more plant-based one week you can, or if maybe your household is split and you want to be more plant-based, but your partner wants to have more meat or something. So I really like that balance. I think also what we try to do is we try to use up the ingredients from that week in mm -hmm. that week because again i'm sure you've been there where you get to the end of your week and you've like done four random things and then you have to throw out half packs of wilted spinach or yeah. half <laughs> pepper and i i always hate it but we're busy and this stuff happens and so we we really also want to try to encourage people to get more confident with how they cook because i think a lot of cooking is just that it's confidence it's it's understanding what ingredients um, can be subbed for what, and that actually there are some great core healthy things that taste fantastic as well. What specifically supports the perimenopause to menopause group of women in terms of nutrition and the supplements? Yeah, so I think that there are two things that should be the primary focus for everyone who's going through that phase. The first one is blood sugar. So as we go through perimenopause and, and menopause, we naturally lose some of our sensitivity to insulin. So that that's kind of one of the reasons why we're more prone to gaining weight. Um, so really about managing your blood sugar. We have a supplement called Metabolic Fix, which really helps with insulin sensitivity, helps with your cravings, and, and it just helps keep your metabolism firing. So that is number one for women is just managing blood sugar. Number two is managing stress. So I think what a lot of women aren't told is that as your ovarian function goes down, your 
adrenal glands have to take over the production of your female hormones, right? And these are the glands that are responsible for cortisol and stress management. And so if they're already completely taxed, completely fried, completely overworked, the production and maintenance of your your female hormones is not going to be a priority. And so it, it really can cause a lot of those fluctuations and drastic symptoms. So although it's easier said than done, managing stress is so important. Like even if you can't change your lifestyle, like you can't sleep more, you've got kids, you've got work, you can still support your stress with supplements and how you eat and how you exercise, right? So it's really about blood sugar and stress. Those are the two main things I would say are the focus. In terms of stress, we actually have a great supplement called Enhanced Nootropics. It's got ashwagandha, which really helps to regulate those adrenal hormones. But then it also has magnesium, 5-HTP, and the methylated Bs, which are all going to be really helpful for mood, for hormones, and also just keeping your stress at bay. I love the simplicity of having the combination of ingredients that target yeah. symptoms it's not complicated. You don't have to make a mix and a blend. It's already done for you and they work. Yeah, thank you. One of the things I found when I was in clinical practice is that so many of the good brands, like the practitioner grade brands, they sold a lot of single nutrients, which I understand and sometimes they're needed. But actually as a practitioner, when you're looking at a root cause, you really want a synergistic kind of blend and to tell people to buy five things and then take, you know, five things for one condition and then five things for for something else. It's not sustainable. People don't want to take 10 pills. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're kind of mad taking this huge pile of pills. So what we've done at Arta is we've really tried to kind of target the underlying causes of imbalance. So we have one for insulin sensitivity. We have one for adrenal dysfunction. And so those are the two that are great for perimenopause specifically and menopause because that really helps you to stay as stable as possible and it's going to help you keep your metabolic flexibility in terms of insulin. Again, as a younger woman not in the realm of perimenopause yet, far from it, how do you find the public perception of this life phase to be? Well, I think there's been a lot of awareness this year, which has been great, um, mm -hmm. kind of in the last six months, there's been a lot more talk about the need to accept menopause and have more education around it, have more support. But again, I feel like this needs to come from a centralized level. It's still not in clinical practice. It's still not in schools. It's still not in the workplace. So we really have to do a huge piece of education here where we're taught to understand the specific uh, challenges that women come up against throughout these life phases and we offer the appropriate support because right now, certainly if you're going to the doctor, there's very little specialized care you can get for this phase unless you go to the private sector, which again, it's so expensive. It's not accessible and it shouldn't be like this. This mm -hmm. is the core phase of life that over 50% of the population go through. So there needs to be more knowledge and solutions kind of built into the system to help. Any key pieces of advice for either women or men? So I think for women, firstly, it's really important to understand that although it might seem really challenging at this time, there are there's so much you can do through your lifestyle that can help through changes in what you're eating and, and when you're eating and how you're training and how you manage your stress response. So there are definitely things that you can do that mean you don't need to kind of go through this phase of life and feel like you're losing your vitality, we want to make sure that you feel like you can still thrive because you absolutely can. So I think that's number one. I think number two is also just to have some patience with it, which again, I, I know is, is easier said than done for anything with health, but to learn about your body and all the things that suit it and all the things that don't, it takes time. And so many of us are used to being in this culture where we're on like a 10 day this, a five day this, and actually it's going to take you a full year to work out kind of what suits you and that's okay. And it's a good process and it's worth it. And I think that for women, especially because we aren't men, because our hormonal landscape fluctuates constantly, this is something that we all really need to invest our time into because um, our bodies are incredible. We can do incredible things, but they're a little bit more complex and that's not bad. It's just, it's just something you need to understand. So really take that time to learn about what's happening and get the support whenever you can. 
Any plans for Otto in the future that we're allowed to know about? Uh, yeah, look, we're, we're very young, right? So we're still in year one. Um, it's going really well. And we've seen some core kind of hero products when it comes to what we sell. So we're really excited that next year we're going to launch some more SKUs um, in gut and hormonal health. And we're also going to be launching more of an education hub. So um, I'm really excited about that because, again, like I said, I think there's a thirst for people to understand their health. And that's going to be what really makes the change, right? It's about the knowledge and the understanding so that they can do it on their own and they don't need to go to someone that has to do it for them. That is wonderful. Is there anything that you would like to add, Rian? I mean, I think that we've really talked about the core things, which are healthy food can taste great. So I promise you that if you want to check out our membership, the first month is complimentary. So you can sign up and have access to all of our meal plans. It also gives you 15% off of all of our supplements and that you can find a regime that you love that works for your body. It just takes a bit of time investing the time and having fun with it and again i go back to the avocado breakfast mousse <laughs> it, yeah you know, great way to start your day where can people find you then so our website is arta.co um our instagram is at arta health um my personal instagram is at rian stevenson so I, I would love for you to check us out and come in and check out our recipes on the membership and see if you like them thank you so much for thank you time. so much for having me Take care, Rian. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Rian has very generously offered us a 10% discount as Real Menopause Talk listeners. I'll put the details in the show notes, but if you go to bit.ly forward slash Arta RMT, that's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash A-R-T-A-H-R-M-T at the checkout, then you will be able to access that discount. So you can find Arta at A-R-T-A-H dot co and on Instagram at Arta Health. Follow us on the podcast apps, click subscribe and like. Please do leave a review as it makes all the difference. And this is what we are aiming to do, to make a difference and to make change. Thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. 